Hey you guys, this is our promo before our main show. I wanted to make you aware that we have an amazing YouTube channel uh, which features some of the great behind the scenes footage from our main podcast as well as some amazing other new content as well that we've got coming up as well with some of our speakers, some of our amazing, I suppose, influencers and, and also sports personalities and Olympic athletes from around the world. It's great because you can sit down with a pen and paper if you're extremely busy, you can make some golden nuggets just from a video. And, and you know what? It's great to connect with someone and see someone face to face by watching the YouTube channel. So listen, guys, go to youtube.com forward slash Adam Strong. Make sure you subscribe to that YouTube. In fact, do me a favor. Pause this audio right now. Go straight to the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us and we'll see you there. Take care. Bye. This is the Game Changers Experience. Deep dive conversations with leading business disruptors, Olympic athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and influencers from around the world. This show will teach you insights about the winning principles in mindset, productivity, marketing, branding, entrepreneurship, business strategy, and more. Hosted by Productivity Authority, business strategist, former elite athlete, author, and public speaker, Adam Strong. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game Changers Experience podcast with myself, Adam Strong. And I am t- today here with the, in the show uh, with Lauren Williams, who is a GB athlete and represents uh, Great Britain in the 400 meter hurdles. Uh, also, is the Welsh record holder, by the way, and is also studying marketing management as well at university, which I'm I'm, I'm fascinated because uh, uh, we, actually I'm going to I'm actually going to ask you a question around the whole kind of uh, how you balance training and full time studies and stuff like that. But I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But thanks and and, and great to have you on the show, Lauren. Oh no, thank you for having me. Um, gosh, I've got to live up to a stellar introduction there, Adam. But uh, <laughs> no, thank you. I'm just great, like happy to be here. Really great. You know, it's interesting because we always bring in. You know, I like I love to bring in a diversity of different av- athletes, whether it be sort of mature athletes, retired athletes, and you know, you're you're, you're a young athlete, young aspiring uh, junior athlete, which I love. And but you know, it's interesting just to hear different, I suppose, um, different different synopsis and different perspectives of of things because. You know, it's just, it's just really, I really find it fascinating. But listen, I know that you're into hurdles and I, I've read your story, which is fascinating, by the way. But how did you, I was just curious, how did you get into athletics and what was the fascination there for you? Um, I think probably a lot of sports people can resonate with this. As a child, I was full of energy and my parents just didn't know what to do with me because I was always wanting to run and go out and I'd be climbing trees and they couldn't keep control of me. So um, they just sort of threw me into um, a club session down at the local track one evening and I just ran and ran and ran and the hour went by and the coach said, well, she's just not even worn out. She's just kept going the whole time <laughs> so my parents were like oh clearly she's got a passion for this um and from there I, I went down every week and I grew a bit in confidence and one of the coaches there actually suggested that I tried the hurdles just because I was such a fearless sort of outgoing wanted to give everything a go kind of attitude as a child um so yeah I just ran and jumped <laughs> and I didn't really look back since um it's just yeah I've just really found a, a passion and love for the hurdles it's kind of yeah, my, my first love on the track, obviously, I do run the 400 metres as well as the 400 metre hurdles, but the hurdles is kind of, yeah, my lane. That's what I like to do. And yeah, that's the event for me, I think. Very cool. Love that. So when I was reading your story, actually, because you, in, with, with regards to your story, there was a few people that that kind of resonate, that really stuck out for me which was um your parents your coaches and some of the support systems as well that you've had in your athletics career and continue to do so which is great but how important has role models been part of part of that in, in achieving success on the track and off the track for you oh yeah hugely i mean i think role models for me obviously i i am so heavily involved in sport but Ultimately, I would say my role models are my parents. Um, So I live in a rural part of Mid Wales 
on a working farm. And for those that don't know farming, agriculture is an industry where the hours are very long and it's hard graft. Um, so just seeing their kind of work ethic and seeing dad get up every day, 365 days a year, you know, he doesn't even have his Christmas day off because there's animals to attend to. Just seeing that work ethic and where it's got him and how successful he has been in his sector has just really kind of made me aspire to be like that and work hard because I am a firm believer that, yes, you can be talented and, yes, you might have a certain like knack for whatever vocation in life it is, but unless you're prepared to put that work in, ultimately the success won't come. So for me, my parents have been massive role models. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's great. I, I love to hear that. And, you know, and I think it's so important to have role models and have support structures in place because it it gives you this kind of, I suppose, platform, doesn't it, in order to sort of say, OK, well, what can we learn from this person and what skills and attributes and values can I take from them? And, you know, what can I do to put it in my own, I, I suppose, career and anything? But you, you mentioned about, you know, your I suppose this, the beginning part of your, your infancy part of your athletics career, but... What it, what what would you say gives you the massive drive and ambition? I mean, why is it that you go to training? Why is it that you get up out of bed every day? Well, I mean, what is the motivation behind that? What inspires you? I think ultimately the love of the sport. You know, sport has taught me so much and I'm only 21 but I've been to Finland I've been to Germany I've been to all these places that I wouldn't have had an opportunity to go to unless sport was there it's given me so many experiences I've learned so much from it you know the dedication and the commitment and things transferable to you know academics to jobs all this kind of stuff so ultimately it's how rewarding the sport is you know if I show up consistently I know that the sport is going to look after me so I think my motivation is where sport can take me and sort of the doors it has opened for me because obviously being from a rural part of mid wales it you know we are kind of out in the middle of nowhere there wasn't the the big facilities you know i hadn't been abroad i think i'd been abroad maybe once as a child and so all these new and exciting things that were happening because of me ultimately just running in circles that's kind of what yeah motivates me to get up and get out the door is there anything that i, I know for different there's different I suppose motivations for different athletes I mean when I was an elite athlete my big I suppose my big uh, uh, motivation was always trying to beat my time right that was like my big I was obsessed about trying to beat my time and you know I obviously not gonna you know beat myself up if I wasn't going to get a personal best every time I ran and stuff but is it is it the same for you or is it slight, slightly different uh, I think I think we can all like hands on heart say that we've been there. We've put times on a pedestal, you know, we've been time chasing those. That one thing that we want to hit, you know, that personal best, whether, you know, you're a couch to 5K and you want to get that sub 25 minute 5K or whether you're sprinting and you want to run under 12 or 11 seconds or whatever it may be. I think we have all set ourselves a target in terms of time. And don't get me wrong, I do set myself targets. You know, you have to. You have to have some kind of goal, some kind of time that you're aspiring to get to. But from my experience, I don't think that setting yourself times is the be all and end all because so so much you can put like the time on a pedestal and be chasing it and chasing it and you can put yourself under so much pressure that actually you're, you, you don't hit it because you lose sight of what's important. You know, the basics, you know, you have to drive out the blocks, you have to hit each like stride pattern at the hurdle, but... If you're running with that time constantly going around in your mind, you lose sight, like you can't see the wood through the trees, for lack of a better phrase. So I think for me, although times are important as targets, they're not kind of the be all and end all. Interesting, because I think with a, a lot of our listeners who are business owners and entrepreneurs in particular, I think uh, when we, we we live in such a busy world, don't we? Right. And yeah. it's interesting because we can sometimes when we come under a lot of stress, we can become you know, very tunnel vision, you know, we, uh, and when we become tunnel vision, we start to miss out on opportunities. Right. And mm -hmm. I guess it's the same in athletics, right. The, you know, there's opportunities coming left, right and center and whether, whether, where, how that appears it is going to be in different ways, but you know, with hurdles though, because hurdles, hurdles, you've got time, but there's also a technicality to hurdles. You know, you've got to master the technicality, uh, with regards to hurdles, but what was your, I suppose, first experience with regards to hurdles. I mean, were you good? I mean, you know, did you did take, is it, is it, is it, is it I, do you get kind of obsessed with the technique side of stuff? I'd love to know your thought process around that. 
Um, so answer to your first question, was I good when I started? Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely terrible I would hit maybe six of them in a row um to the point where actually my very first coach my grassroots coach his name was Arnie he was a lovely chap and he actually would set out a lane of hurdles and make sure that either lane on the track each side was completely clear and no other athletes were hurdling near me because he knew that I'd be such a kamikaze because I was so fearless I'd run and hit them and it wouldn't phase me and I'd come back for more and do it again um, I think ultimately that's probably what led me to be successful in the event is that lack of fear for it. But it, it was, I was so, so terrible. But I think what it's kind of learned me is that, you know, you can hit those first hurdles and, you know, metaphorically speaking, or even in my event speaking, you hit those hurdles. But what is the important part is how you deal with that, you know, that you have to get back up and dust yourself off and go again. And I think that rings true in a lot of different areas in life. But I think, yeah, to, answer, to basically to answer your question, no, I was terrible, but I got back up and got on with it. So I think that's kind of led me to where I've got to be. Um, and then in terms of the technique side of things, I think we're all obsessive over technique. Um, again, it could, this is like transferable across all sectors. You know, you've got to master your craft ultimately. You know, it's like your baby, isn't it? Whether you're writing a book, whether you're yeah. working on a side project or a hustle, like, you know, with your podcast, there's always things you can be improving. So Yes, I would say I'm a bit obsessive over the technique. <laughs> but it's interesting. Uh, I mean, you must have, I mean, certainly in my athletics career, I don't know about you, but I had more failures than I did successes, I, I guess. But how do you view um, failure? And, and, and do you see failure a good thing or a bad thing? Failure, I mean, when you're living through that failure, yeah, it's the worst thing in the world, obviously. You know, no one likes to fail per se, mm. but I really do think it's how you view it and what you take from that experience of failing and failure. Um, so I, I do a lot of talks at schools. Um, I go into talk to the children about growth mindset, and basically, the underlying principle of growth mindset is that you know, success isn't linear. You know, when you're learning to ride a bike, you're going to fall off a couple of times before you actually master it. Um, and that for me is kind of why failure is so important because unless you fail, you don't know where you've gone wrong and where those improvements can be made. Um, and I think, yeah, like failure obviously isn't great, but it's what you take from that and how you sort of get back up and what you do after that failure to make sure it doesn't happen again. And Ultimately, that's where the success will come because you'll learn from past mistakes. Because so I think that us, here, especially in Europe, actually, and us Europeans, is that they see failure as a as a bad thing, right? And you know, in other parts of the world, they don't. They see it as a as a you know, as you mentioned, a kind of a from a growth mindset. They see it as a learning experience, right? Without without failure, you're never going to know if it's right or wrong, and and, and things like that. Um, I was going to say to you, because you have had numerous coaches, you know, from a very young age up, and you still have coaches around you and surrounding yourself with the best and that kind of stuff. What has coaching done for you? And, and what is, what have you learned the most out of from coaching? Um, so a coaching relationship, I would say ultimately the most important thing is, is trust. You know, it's, it's what underpins any kind of team, any kind of teamwork is that you have to have faith in the people you're working alongside and trust that they know what they're doing and want the best for you. Um, and I've been fortunate that all my coaches, like you say, from a very young age have always wanted the best for me in my sport. And so I've trusted in what programs they're setting and just really had faith in what they were telling me to do is going to get me to where I want to be. Um, another element of kind of the coaching relationship, which has taught me a lot is that communication is key. You know, if you turn up to a session and you've not slept very well, you're feeling a bit poorly, or you think that there's something niggling, you know, my Achilles isn't feeling good. You just need to tell that coach because then they'll adapt the session, make it according to how you're feeling on that day. So that, you know, you don't go out there, run the first rep really hard and injure yourself ultimately. So I think that communication is something that I've learned is vitally important when working in a coaching relationship um and then also yeah the trust because without the trust there you know you're never going to be confident and assured in what you're doing and what your coach is setting so I think those are two really key principles that I think you can take into any kind of teamwork situation wherever you may be you even though you're doing an uh, you know it's an individual event at the end of the day 
what do you, from your perspective, um, you know, how do you view, I suppose, your team, you know, because you must be surrounded with a lot of experts and, you know, whether it be coaches or, you know, medical team, whatever it might be, how, how um, important or have they been with regards to preparing you for an event or, or things like that? Well, what's what, any thought processes around that? Yeah. Um, so yes, it is an individual sport. You know, I am the one that stands on the line and has to get from A to B. I mean, you know, I get from the start line to the finish line and no one else is going to run that race for me, but I wouldn't get to that start line and be on that start line without the team that a lot of people don't see behind the scenes, you know, and that doesn't just mean my physios and my coaches, that's my family, that's my friends, anyone in my support network, you know, it might be that I've had an awful, awful session and maybe like had a few, you know, crosswords with my coach, but I'll come home and I'll have a friend on the end of the phone who'll just help me, you know, put things in perspective for me. We'll have a laugh and then just completely change my mindset to a more positive one. So it's everybody in that support work, like network and how they all interact really that is what gets me onto that start line. And there's been occasions where, you know, I may have missed a selection or may not have run well in a race, but, you know, my coach has, you know, been there and said, no, look, there's this to aim for, you know, we, we reset our goals. We, you know, go again, we correct the mistakes. And I think without that support network, yeah, like you say, I, I don't think I'd be on that start line. And although it's an individual sport, the team is vastly important ultimately. Very cool. I know that, as I mentioned, you know, a lot of our listeners are business owners or entrepreneurs and they're all on different, t- you know, they're, they're all in diff- they're all on different paths, I suppose. And they're all there on different area. There'd be a startup side hustle business or their experienced business or owner or entrepreneur question around. I want to go back to coaching actually, if I may, I know that we, um, <laughs> I know that, a lot of us are always looking for, I suppose, shortcuts to success, right? Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned around four, I suppose, key attributes that, you know, that you look for in a really good coach as such, Mm -hmm. right? Any advice for people that think that number one is that it's a waste of time or um, I'll do it myself type of mindset. You know, I'd love to know what your thought patterns are on that because one of the things that I see in our industry, people, especially people who run a business and that kind of stuff is I'm not sure if it, that they don't value coaching or, or whatever it is, but you know, from the things that you're telling me, it's like, well, why does not, why, why is it that not everybody should have, everyone needs a coach, right? So, so any advice for people that think otherwise? Um, firstly, I'd say if you are one of those people that is, I'll do it myself, my way or the highway, I know best. I would just encourage you to one pause and take a step back and look at how successful you've been so far, because I would challenge that maybe you haven't actually achieved everything you're capable of. Um, and the reason that that may be is that there is a lot of people around you that have the potential to be your support network per se, who have had different experiences. You know, we're all individuals. We've all lived through different things and we've learned different things from different mistakes and lessons. So why should it be all on you to go out and make those mistakes and learn? Because ultimately it's going to be a much lower process. You know, if you tap into the people around you and learn from them and ask them how they might do things, you know, you might come to a solution or an idea much, much quicker because you have that pool of different people with different experiences, you know, that you just, you might have a completely different outlook on a situation. Um, For example, I don't know if we look at the share economy business, Airbnb, you know, right. We all know Airbnb, the massive, massive hospitality um, sort of online platform where, you know, you can book a night stay in someone's home. Well, the founders of them, they've come from very different walks of life. Like two of the guys lived together in a university. One was a design guy and the other studied finance. And then they brought in another person who was a techie guy who'd worked in Silicon Valley in a startup there for a couple of years. So they set up this massive multi-million pound business, but they have all had very different experiences. And so the three of them together knew how to create that successful business. Whereas if say one of them, the techie guy had just gone and set it up himself, he wouldn't have maybe perhaps understand the customer experience side of things or how to market it or how to get his brilliant platform out there. So I would say to people who want them to do it by themselves, just, just stop for a minute and look who is around you and who actually might help you get to where you want to be. 
you know, listen, I, I'm just, this is kind of music to my ears. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I hope that our listeners, I hope that you're getting some really good advice here because this is coming from a 21 year old GB athlete, right? Okay. That has very little experience about business, but she knows a lot about how to be successful or how to, be, how to essentially create a, a growth mindset, which I love that, right? You know, it's not rocket science is what I would kind of say. Um, Best advice you've ever you've ever ever received? Oh gosh, best best advice I've ever received. Because I know that there's been some good times and there's been some bad times in your career, right? But um, what? And I know, and one kind of sticks out for me, but I, I'm just waiting to see if you mention her. Oh gosh, this is oh this is really difficult. I there's been a lot of good advice over the years, but I'd say. I'm not sure whether this is what you're looking for, but it might be on the right tracks is that my coach as a junior, he came around and said to me, high risk, high reward. And I think that basically is just another euphemism for that growth mindset. You know, you've got to take those risks. You've got to take those gambles. And if they don't pay off, that's fine because you, you'll, you can learn from that. That's an experience, you know, that didn't work that good time, but now I know what to do. But if you don't take that risk, you may never reap that reward. You may never have gone there or gone to that place you needed to go or tested that new sector or that new customer or that new target demographic. It might have been what you deemed as a massive risk, but until you go there, you don't know. So yeah, probably the best advice is high risk, high reward. Love that. That's a great piece of advice. I love that. It's <laughs> great. Um, I know that you study full time um, at university, but you also do um, i believe you're a full-time athlete as well how do you make how do you create this fine balance between the two because they are very demanding on both fronts from a mental perspective as well as a physical and an emotional perspective how do you get that fine balance um a lot of people ask me this and i just say look everybody's busy everybody's busy to their level so whether you are working a nine till five and then you have a side hustle where you might be trying to start up your own business aside from that or doing a course or whatever Mm -hmm. everyone is busy to their level and it's just ultimately how you come to learn to manage your time you know you know best when you're most productive so for me i'll go and get my training done in the morning because that's when i'm most full of energy and then gives me the afternoon and the evenings then to get my university work attend my lectures do that kind of thing um whereas there was you know years where potentially I would say oh this work needs to be in tomorrow so I'm going to get up and work on that all day it'd get to 6 p.m and I still hadn't gone training and then I'd you know feel absolutely drained because I'd worked all day so I think mm, probably how I sort of balance the two I say is time management and knowing when I am most productive um and then also kind of like segmenting things so a lot of us will write you know a to-do list but if I choose to work on one thing on that to-do list, that is what I'm doing for that hour or that two hours that I've set aside. And once that is done, then I'll move on and do the next thing. Because if you're constantly thinking about everything you've got to do, you're just going to be falling between stools. So I'd say knowing when I'm most productive, time management and kind of segmenting and like just giving yourself sole focus on the task at hand. That's really sound advice. Uh, It's interesting because uh, you know, we mentioned it, this off air when we were talking, right? We did, uh, we launched Power Up Thursdays. And one of the first sessions that we did was all on how to improve or how to master your time management. And you just kind of really kind of segmented or double segmented what I've been talking about in my talk, which is fantastic. So guys, if you don't believe me, listen to Lauren. Right. I mean, it's it's not rocket science. It really isn't. So um But, you know, uh, that's great. So tell me, um, last, I I suppose, last question really for me. I mean, what are you working on right now, future-wise? What what is the uh, big aspiring dream? And and, and what is, so what's the aspiring dream is is one question. And the second one is, what is your big why? Okay. Um, What I'm working on at the minute is being the best I can be. And that's in university and that is in sport and where, whatever that may be you know that's what I'm working towards just being the best I can be individually yeah. um in terms of goals and goal setting um I've set myself a target of the 2022 Commonwealth Games to represent Wales pull on the you know the red of my nation um yeah shout out to anyone Welsh listening to the podcast <laughs> um 
So no, that's probably my my goal in terms of sport. Um, working hard towards that, I want to be on that start line. And then, yeah, just ultimately, I want to come out of university with the best degree I can possibly get. So you know, I'm aiming for a first. Um, so yeah, those, those are probably what I'm aiming for. Um, my why is because we only get to live this life once. You know, so many times people you'll see are just pushing themselves and stuck in this job that they don't like. And I I just say like why maybe that's my naivety and being young and having the whole world in front of me but I just say say why are you doing that you get to be here once so do what you want to do and be happy doing it and just work really hard to be the best you can be in that so that's my why is I'm working hard to be the best I can be because I know that I will be happy if I'm giving it my all at what I love to do very good. Listen, I um, first of all, I just want to say thanks very much for being on the show today. I hope you've been, enjoyed our conversations. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you for having me. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> and, and you know what? This is the reason why I love the Game Changers experience, because we bring on hungry, pas- passionate, not just entrepreneurs, but aspiring athletes, athletes, Olympians, whatever it might be. And I just, I love listening to that kind of stuff. And, you know, um, I hope that it's kind of giving you guys some motivation and, or inspiration, whatever it is, or energy, um, high energy or whatever it is that you take away from today's show. But I hope you've enjoyed today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop us an email. Uh, but ultimately also, if you Uh, have any questions around today and you want to reach out to Lauren, please use the uh, social media handles below. Just mention the Game Changers Experience podcast so that she knows that you're not some strange person stalking her or whatever it might be, which I know is not true. Um, (laughs) um, And also, if you've also been enjoying our shows as well, feel free to leave a five-star review on whatever platform you are listening to this too. So listen, guys, have a fantastic day, week, month, whenever you're listening to this, and we'll see you on the next Game Changers podcast. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening in to this episode of the Game Changers experience. I hope that you got some amazing value, some great insights and golden nuggets that you can implement into your business straight away. I would really, really appreciate it if you could leave a five-star review on the button below. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.